Hello everyone. Today's devotional reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses, verses 14 through 29, where it is written. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. Brothers said, It is Elijah. And others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I'll give it, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. John the Baptist was a proto-martyr. Proto, because Jesus Christ had actually been crucified and risen yet. Pentecost hadn't come, the church hadn't started yet. So it was before Christianity really existed. But still, God stood up for what was right, and it cost him his life. And John paved the way for what would be many martyrs in the years to come. Whether it was the early church, people dying because they refused to sacrifice to the Roman gods. Or say in the Middle Ages, where Thomas Becket refused to bow to political peer pressure, and it cost him his life. And even now, in the modern world, Western Christians, I think we're a bit spoiled here. Being mocked uh, by the media <laughs> isn't quite persecution. If you want to see persecution, go to modern-day China, modern-day Iran, and so on. Places where the Bible is illegal. Um, you'd be in jail for having one. That if you profess faith in Jesus Christ, for example, in Islamic countries, you can, you can legally be killed as a capital crime under blasphemy laws. In China, how dare you say there's a God and not the state? Same with that uh, labor camp where they work you quite literally to death. And here's what doesn't make sense to the world. All you got to say is, okay, I don't believe in Jesus Christ, and we'll leave you alone. You can spare yourself, not just your life, but all this pain and suffering, just deny him. Yet in antiquity, in the Roman days, in the Middle Ages with Thomas the Becket, in the present, in China and Iran, people don't. They said, make my life a living hell. Kill me. But I will never, ever renounce faith in my Lord Jesus Christ. The world's like, Why? Why? What is the big deal about this Jesus Christ that you're, gonna, you're willing to suffer and die for him? Why? And it's not just because he suffered and died for me. Okay, that's part of it. But why will we not recant him? Because he is God. And he's man. And him is life, light, and love. He died on the cross to forgive us our sins. He rose again from the dead to bring that resurrection to us. So we mart when we are martyred, if we are martyred, death is only temporary. He did all of this because he is life, light, and love. If we were to walk away from him, we'd have nowhere to go. He is our everything. 
It means more to us than our earthly comforts or our earthly life. And we follow him. And that's not just us. Every Christian throughout the world, throughout history, is making that hard choice. The dividends have paid off. Jesus Christ is totally worth dying for. For as one man, Tertullian put it, but 200 years after Jesus Christ, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Ironically, when the church is not persecuted, it gets fat and lazy. When it, where it is being persecuted, it's fervent and it's on fire. Irony. But what's not ironic is that Jesus Christ is our Lord and God. Died and risen for us. He has light. He has love. And he's totally worth dying for. Because again, if we walk away from him, we have nowhere to go. It's that simple. Let us pray. God, help us be fervent in prayer for the persecuted church throughout the world. And God, if persecution ever comes to our doorstep, give us the Holy Spirit that we might not turn away, but follow you into that crown of life. Amen.